Welcome back. In the previous step, we implemented the find by ID method. Now, let's go ahead and implement methods to be able to update and delete a person. Public person, the method which we want to define to update a person is update person person. And what we want to do in here is return entity manager dot merge. So whether you'd want to update or insert, you need to call the merge method. What the merge method does is it knows whether the ID is set inside the person or not. If there is an ID in the person which is already set, then it would try and update that person. If there is no ID set, then it would insert it in as simple as that. So let's add another method. Let's call it insert. Actually, you don't really need two methods because the logic in here is really the same. There is no difference between an update and an insert as far as an entity manager is concerned. We have update and insert present in here and let's go to our JPA demo app and what we want to do is now bring the insert and update into picture. Let's organize our imports java.util.date person that's it. So we are now inserting 10,004 and we are updating 10,003. So let's see if all that gets fired properly. Let's run the application again. I want to make sure that it's killed. Nope, it's not. So I killed it again and restarted it again. Let's see what happens now. You can see the query is getting written down here as well. So you see a select being written. After the select, what we are doing? We are doing a insert. So where is the insert getting fired? Here is the insert that is getting fired. So insert into person. You can see that Hibernate is calculating the value for us. So Hibernate is really taking the person ID and it's calculating the value for us in here. It's inserting a new person in. And after that, what is happening here is the update. So update person is happening for that specific ID. So here Hibernate is using a sequence before inserting it in. That's cool, right? So now I can go to the, let's go to the H2 console to see the data. Let's refresh so that we can get a new connection to it, connect. Let's do a select star from person. You'd see that Hibernate assigns an ID of one to the insert. So whatever we have inserted in, Hibernate assigns a value of one to it. The best way to do the insert is by not even passing a ID in. So we don't assign the ID, we would let Hibernate assign the ID because Hibernate would ignore whatever ID I'm passing in. This is the best way to do that. I'm not even passing in the ID and I would let Hibernate dictate the ID for me. And now when you run the application again, you would see that Thara would still have the ID of one. That's the ID which is being assigned to it by Hibernate. Let's refresh this again, continue, connect. You can see that Thara is having an ID one. If you insert further rows into that table, you would see that you would get IDs 2, 3, 4, and 5, and so on. I mean, it would directly assign IDs based on a sequence it creates. So here, if you see, there's a sequence which is being created called Hibernate Sequence. It will use the sequence to assign the IDs to different things. In this quick step, what we did is we defined a method to be able to insert and update a person. Until the next step, bye-bye.